If you are wondering when will the White Sox make a significant move to improve their roster and set themselves up for success in 2023, you are not alone. Uh, It was minor, but the White Sox did acquire a left-handed arm recently, but again, I'm sure it is nowhere near the type of move you were looking for. Uh, Dylan Cease came close to winning the Cy Young Award, but it won't be his last time in contention, and I will take a trip down White Sox memory lane. You are locked on White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Sox fans, welcome to Lockdown White Sox. Thank you for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen each and every day. Uh, We're free and available on all platforms. Follow us on Twitter at Lockdown Sox. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, Just search Lockdown White Sox. Hey, I'm your host, Nick Murawski, a lifelong diehard Chicago White Sox fan, recording this podcast just blocks from the ballpark in beautiful Bridgeport. Uh, You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTB. Really appreciate you letting me steal some of your time to talk off-season White Sox. Lockdown White Sox is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, 50 years ago, Dick Allen had one of the greatest seasons in a White Sox uniform. Uh, Dylan Cease was one of the few bright spots of the 2022 season, and missing out on the Cy Young Award should not diminish that fact. Uh, And as other teams begin to make moves, the White Sox, for the most part, uh, stay on the sidelines. Uh, With all of the craziness of the White Sox adding Ramos and Rodriguez to the 40-man roster on Tuesday, uh, I was not able to celebrate the big acquisition of Nate Fisher. Uh, If you are unfamiliar with Nate Fisher, join the club, uh, but MLB trade rumors uh, had you covered. Uh, This is an article from uh, uh, Darrow. McDonald, uh, the White Sox have an agreement with left-hander Nate Fisher on a minor league deal, uh, reports Robert Murray, a fan cited. Fisher will receive an invite to next year's spring training. Uh, As mentioned by Murray, Fisher is known as the banker, a reference to his unusual journey to the big leagues. Uh, He was released by the Mariners in May of 2020 and took an a job with First National Bank of Omaha until re-signing with the Mariners in June of 2021. Uh, He was able to throw 37 and a third innings that year, posting a 2.89 ERA along with a 31.8% strikeout rate and 7.4 walk rate. Uh, Though he reached free agency at the end of the year, he intrigued the Mets enough to get a minor league deal with them Uh, He continued getting good results in the minors this year, enough to get selected to the Mets' roster and make uh, his MLB debut in August. Though he was designated for assignment and outrighted after one scoreless three-inning appearance uh, in the minors, he eventually logged 84 and two-thirds innings with a 4.15 ERA, 22% strikeout rate, and 9.3% walk rate. After reaching free agency, uh, again, he already has a new deal in place with the Sox. The club uh, has five lefties on the roster, with all of those having question marks to some degree. Uh, Aaron Bummer uh, has posted strong results in recent years, but missed about half the 2022 uh, season due to a lat strain. Uh, While he was out, the club acquired Jake Diekman from the Boston Red Sox, who posted a 6.2, I'm sorry, 6.52 ERA after the trade. Garrett Crochet, of course, underwent Tommy John surgery in April and will miss at least part of the 2023 campaign. And then there's Tanner Banks and Bennett Sousa who both just debuted in 2022 and could potentially be optioned and recalled throughout the season. The club could add to this mix throughout the offseason via free agency or trade, 
uh, but have bolstered the depth for now by bringing in Fisher. And you thought Rick Hahn and the White Sox organization was just going to sit on their hands and let things pass them by? Uh, the fear of missing out is indeed, uh, is indeed real. Uh, that Fisher deal, uh, nothing to really get excited about. Uh, we as fans are looking at some of the other stuff happening in MLB. Uh, Tampa has been pretty active lately. The Blue Jays and Mariners orchestrated a big deal. Toronto uh, sent outfielder Hernandez to Seattle. Uh, Hernandez and, and Tapia were two guys that I remember hurting the White Sox this past season. Uh, Toronto recently DFA'd Tapia. Uh, he would be an interesting addition to the South Side. Uh, so if you are if you're new to the White Sox fandom and, and possibly new uh, to following the Chicago White Sox closely into the off season, you might be wondering what is going on. Where is Rick Hahn at? Uh, Tampa is giving away players. Other teams seem to be rumored or attached to big free agents. When will the White Sox uh, do something significant? And, and I get it. I absolutely get that. Uh, I have been through this for a long time. Uh, just because I've gotten used to it doesn't mean I'm happy about it, though. Uh, the biggest contract uh, in White Sox history, of course, was signed on November 21st. Uh, 2019. Uh, that was Yasmani Grandal, uh, that big free agency signing. White Sox didn't waste any time. And that was very early uh, for the White Sox. Uh, they never operate that quickly. And after what Rick Hahn said during the uh, general manager meetings, I do not anticipate the White Sox to be terribly active during the rest of this month. Uh, as Tom Petty said, the waiting is the hardest part. Uh, Dylan Cease had a career year in 2022, but the White Sox did not reach their goals and Cease did not win the Cy Young Award. Uh, despite falling short, I'm going to tell you why this is only the beginning uh, for Dylan Cease. More on that in a moment. Today's episode is brought to you by Simply Safe. Uh, if you've thought about securing your home with home security but have been putting it off, you'll want to listen up. Right now, Locked On White Sox listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. Uh, this is their biggest offer of the year, and you won't want to miss it. Uh, did you know that over the holidays, property crimes like burglaries and package theft spike nationally? Uh, that's why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off their award winning security system so that more families can feel safe and secure this holiday season. Order your Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security and greater peace of mind this holiday season. Uh, in an emergency, 24 7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Simply Safe is whole home security with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door, HD security cameras for inside and out, smarter ways to detect motion that alert you only when a threat is real, and even hazard sensors that detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. 24-7 professional monitoring service costs less than a dollar a day, uh, less than half the price of ADT's traditional professionally installed system. With the top-rated Simply Safe app, uh, stay in complete control of your system anytime, anywhere, arm or disarm, unlock for a guest, access your cameras or adjust system settings. Get 50% off uh, any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB today. Uh, this is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. There's no safe like Simply Safe. So, uh, speaking of waiting, uh, the Cy Young Awards were announced on Wednesday night on the MLB network. And finalist Dylan Cease uh, had this to say about 2022 quote, Coming up, I was more of a velocity guy. Uh, early on in my career, my fastball didn't play as well, and I focused more on my off speed, and it came together 
uh, end quote talked about how his slider, uh, a favorite pitch of his, and we saw that uh, this past year. Uh, Dylan Cease will have to wait his turn uh, on the Cy Young Award, though. Uh, finishing second to Justin Verlander should not be seen as a failure uh, at all. Verlander had an outstanding season, capped off with a World Series win. Uh, Dylan Cease will get his moment, uh, but falling short in capturing the Cy Young Award should not diminish everything that was accomplished this past year. Uh, Dylan Cease was one of the few bright spots of 2022, and his one hitter against the Minnesota Twins uh, was one of the very few exciting moments of the 2022 season. Uh, Scott Merkin, White Sox beat writer for MLB.com, broke it all down uh, recently. Uh, Justin Verlander, understandably, is receiving a great deal of support for his third uh, American League Cy Young, uh, but Cease is just as deserving to win his first in the 2022 AL balloting. He finished the season like an ace, posting a, a 10 and 6 record uh, with a 1.51 ERA, uh, 23 earned runs over 137 and a third innings pitched, a 173 average against. Uh, that's a 173 batting average against and 156 strikeouts in his last 22 starts. Uh, Cease allowed one earned run or less 23 times uh, this past season, tied with Wilbur Wood, 1972. We're going to be talking about that season. Uh, for the most in club history, the 23 starts are the most by a major league starter, non-opener since Blake Snell in 2018. Uh, also 23. Uh, the only starters, uh, non-openers in AL, NL history with more games of one or zero earned runs allowed since Sandy Koufax and Bob Gibson. The right-hander set an AL, NL record with 14 straight starts, allowing one earned run or less from May 29th to August 11th yielding six earned runs over 82 innings during that stretch. Uh, there were nine separate starts where Cease gave up two hits or less, including Cease taking a no-hitter within one out of completion at home against the Twins on September 3rd before Luis arises two out, ninth inning single. Uh, his 2.20 ERA was second in the AL, behind Verlander, as was his 190 batting average against. Uh, Cease's 227 strikeouts left him second behind Garrett Cole's 257, uh, while his slider was rated as the most valuable pitch in baseball uh, with a minus 36 run value per stat cast ahead of Shohei Otani's slider at minus 28. Opponents had a 128 batting average against Cease's slider, and a 209 slugging percentage, again, per stat cast. Wow. What a season by Dylan Cease. Uh, uh, Justin Verlander won the award once again, but Cease, he will be back uh, in contention. In 1972, uh, Dick Allen came to Chicago with a ton of fanfare and delivered immediately. I'm going to tell you how he created history and maybe saved a franchise. Uh, more on that in a moment. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Uh, get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, uh, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those as well. Uh, at Bet Online. We're always the fastest and the easiest way to get your betting fixed. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Uh, Bet Online, where the game starts. The Chicago White Sox have only had four players in their history to win the AL MVP award uh, Nellie Fox in uh, 1959, Frank Thomas uh, won it. Back-to-back -back years, 93-94, Jose Abreu in 2020, and Dick Allen in 1972. Uh, this past Tuesday, November 15th, marked the 
50th anniversary of Dick Allen winning uh, the AL MVP. I have talked about this book maybe far too much, but Chili Dog MVP by John Owens and David Fletcher is an absolute must read for all White Sox fans. Uh, it centers around the 1972 White Sox season and, of course, the superstar, uh, Dick Allen. Uh, the White Sox shocked the baseball world in a lot of respects by bringing Dick Allen to the South Side. Uh, Allen reignited a passion amongst fans in his first year with the White Sox and is often credited with saving the franchise. Uh, this is an excerpt from Chili Dog MVP. In his first season in the American League, Dick Allen dominated with 37 home runs, 113 RBIs. He was the second black player in Chicago baseball history to win an MVP after the Cubs' Ernie Banks captured back-to-back -back honors in 1958-59. Uh, but this award was truly in the spirit of an MVP. Uh, Allen had put his team on his back and carried them into surprise contention. The most valuable player displayed his humble side as he talked to the press about the honor. Uh, he did not think he would win the MVP, believing that it would go to Joe Rudy, uh, who led his A's to a world championship. Uh, but Dick said he wouldn't be completely satisfied until the White Sox won a pennant with him. Quote, baseball is more and more an individual game, but I am one of those guys who happen to believe it is still a team game. And our team became tighter than pantyhose, two sizes too small, uh, end quote. Uh, the supreme sentiment that came from the MVP press conference was Dick Allen's love of his new home city. Uh, quote, the fans of Chicago have done a lot for me, uh, he said in an emotional moment. I don't say... I've been fair to the people of baseball, but sometimes they haven't been fair to me. Coming to Chicago made a human being out of me. I'd like to end my career right here in Chicago. You can trade me if you want, but I'm coming right back, end quote. Uh, Dick Allen did not finish his career uh, with the Chicago White Sox, and actually the end of his tenure on the South Side was a little turbulent, uh, but what he did for the White Sox, especially uh, during 1972 should never uh, be forgotten. Allen's career was an amazing story, and he should be in uh, Baseball's Hall of Fame. Again, Chili Dog MVP, it's a perfect gift uh, for yourself or any White Sox fan in your life. Folks, thank you so very much for making this podcast part of your daily routine. You can find the Lockdown White Sox podcast absolutely everywhere you find your podcasts. We are on Twitter at Lockdown Sox. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTV. Uh, thank you for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen. For your next listen, uh, check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up on the next episode, I'll continue to examine off-season White Sox scenarios as the White Sox go full steam ahead with the Pedro Grafol era. Really appreciate uh, you making time for the Lockdown White Sox podcast. I'm Nick Morawski. Until next time, go Sox!